So we have seen multiple scenarios where uh, we experienced that uh, the same instruction could be using uh, two types of encoding. Um, and this is due to the flexibility of the combination of the direction bit in the opcode and the structure of mode reg RM byte. So I'm going to skip this section. It's just for your reference. I suggest that you read this. And uh, the summary uh, of uh, 32-bit Intel uh, x86 opcodes is that they can be, of course, one or two bytes. And uh, some of the opcodes could extend into the fields of mode reg RM. There are various types of instructions that do that. And the uh, opcode encodes the information about the operation to perform, such as uh, increment, add, or move, and so forth. Uh, the operands, of course, the operands are all of these things that we tried, all sorts of operands. And the same instruction has to be able to find its operands. So this is, uh, this is done through the mode reg RM byte in many cases, and sometimes it's just encoded in the actual opcode. And uh, the sizes of operands are also important, as we observed right here. So all of these varieties of things related to how to access memory and what operation to execute um, is, uh, uh, is specified by the opcode structures. So this is just a summary of mode regrm. So essentially, just remember that this fancy uh, name stands for mode register or register memory and uh, these things basically tell us how to specify these components okay so these usually used together and these specify the other one right so these two operands that are uh, needed by this instruction are specified right here okay and they're also uh, combined with the direction bit in the opcode uh, byte in front of mode regrm byte. So just a summary of uh, ideas that kind of stem from these experiments that we try today. Uh, so the instruction set architecture that we're looking here today goes back to 1980s um, in the decision making of organizing all of these opcodes and opcode fields and individual bytes and everything together. So instruction set architecture design uh, has to stand the test of time. And it's an intellectual challenge to uh, today to be able to predict how su successful decisions that you're making today will be in one year and five years and so forth. So uh, of course, uh, some compromises have to be made. And today, people are still using x86 instructions uh, for the purposes never intended by original designers. So we can say that uh, this uh, architecture is quite successful. Uh, and overall, extending the CPU is a difficult task. Basically, extending the CPU means how do we add new instructions and merge them with already existing opcodes? This is why studying the structure of the opcodes gives you an idea of what are the challenges, what are the components that the instruction compo uh, instruction opcodes contain. And so this gives you an idea how much uh, you have to take an account to then uh, say, okay, this is our set of opcodes and we have thousands of opcodes. Um, already in the CPU and how do we continue developing the CPU take it to the next level so that we can add a new instruction so of course it's a very difficult task and so the instruction set can be extremely complex and it is in nowadays uh, architectures of the CPUs so if this CPU was designed from scratch today it would have been a totally different instruction set architecture so I mean the the mnemonics that we use to indicate the commands and operands and uh, pseudocode and all this right could be sort of like similar to what we do maybe very very close to what we do but the underlying uh, encoding of it could be sort of streamlined or uh, optimized in certain ways but um, 
what we are seeing when we are disassembling these instructions and we're observing the actual opcodes, those are the results of historical development of these codes uh, over um, dozens of years. So these are some of the uh, uh, ideas I wanted to show you in terms of uh, the entire uh, design uh, of this, like how did this come to be like this and there is a lot of history and of course the challenges are that for future expansions for future versions of new instructions there has to be a place for undefined opcodes so that there has to be a room or space for new opcodes to be added and from the beginning there should be a balance between the number of undefined opcodes and those that we already use so these are all pretty uh, pretty hard decisions and uh, they need to stand the test of the time now the rest of this presentation is just uh, uh, giving you some of the um, um, intel uh, manual uh, format uh, reference uh, information uh, for instance it shows you uh, how uh, specific uh, formats of uh, official intel documentation um, is um, uh, using and uh, so this will be part of our next laboratory exercise uh, this is not going to be included in in this series of videos which are primarily once again focusing on the uh, opcode examples.